Hi and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Defence and I'm Nick Thomas and bringing you Hema at Home, going through military swordsmanship according to Charles Roweth. Now his style is um, using a range of different swords, which is why I show a range of different swords. I'm going to use the sabre here because it has essentially a nice open hilt for you to see what's going on. Um, with uh, the six cut exercise, I've done a video on it before, years and years ago, it's on YouTube. But I think it's worth revisiting, uh, especially as it's core to the system and also because, you know, you're stuck at home and it is a fantastic home exercise because all you need is a sword or sword-like object. If you haven't got much room to swing things, use something smaller. So I like a dog ball throw when I'm out with my dog. I still do the six cut diagram when I'm walking around with, the, with my dog. And um, this... Uh, diagram was basically new at the time of Rose's first edition, or almost new. So what happened is, is uh, Gaspard Le Marchant, who designed the uh, light cavalry sabre, was over in the war in the Low Countries in the uh, early 1790s, and he was completely <laughs> unimpressed with British swords and swordsmanship um, when he was there, but he was very impressed with the Austrians. And he returned and designed a new sword with Osborne in Birmingham, uh, designed the 796 light cavalry sabre, which of course is very, very, uh, very, very famous. It looks like this. This is essentially an infantry sword that's inspired by it. So that would the uh, light cavalry, as I've shown loads of times, just like a beefier, brutish version of this. So he designed that sword, and he also designed uh, a manual on cavalry swordsmanship that got adopted as the first official British military manual of swordsmanship. So there were manuals before, but they were not official or adopted. And in that manual was introduced the six cut exercise. And often you'll see mention in British sources of the time of um, combining sort of Austrian or Hungar Hungarian methods with Scottish methods or Scotch methods. And that's probably referring to things like the six cut diagram because we know there is evidence of it being used say in Hungary uh, well before this. So that's likely the origin of why they say in Hungarian or Austrian or whatever else. And it's something that carried on through British sources or versions of it for, a, well, for a long time. <laughs> so it goes on with Angelo and all the other Angelos and through other manuals afterwards. So I've done videos on the six cut, uh, six cuts individually. So he did one and two, three and four and five and six. And in Roth, when he first goes through them, he shows you how to do them with a recovery to guard. Um, and that's really, really important because you should be going to recovery to a strong guard after most cuts, whether they've uh, succeeded or not. With the six cut diagram, we don't do the recoveries. We just go straight to the next cut, shortest way possible, because it shows it in the diagram. So there's a printed diagram that comes with the original Roeth book. You put it to a wall where you stand back and do the cuts in front of it, not actually making contact with anything. So he specifically doesn't want you, say, hitting a pell. It is actually, you stand away from it and cut the air, okay? So it's air saber, air sword, yeah, something like that. And, um, with this exercise, you're going to deliver all of your cuts. They're all going to pass through the same point, which is this point here, the maximum extension in a straight line from shoulder to tip, which is why the diagram should be put on the wall at that height. So when we go through the cuts, which I'm not going to talk too much about the individual cuts because you should go and watch the three videos to learn those in the first place. Once you know those, do the six cut diagram. So it starts, we'll start in the outside guard, which I find the most convenient for this. We're going to deliver cut one, Rotate, keeping the hand here in front. Deliver cut two, rotate, three, four, five, six. So you're keeping your hand as much as is possible in front so that essentially it is a pivot point as I discussed in the previous videos. So as much as possible, you avoid using the elbow. There are times in certain cuts where the elbow is gonna come into play, such as, you know, you make a parry like this, it's going to use some elbow. But by default, wherever you can, you pivot around with the wrist and don't expose it. He actually specifically recommends or warns against bending and exposing it, even though, um, curiously, in late, some later, uh, say, Italian sources, they do cut more from the elbow, which is a different style for a different time. It doesn't mean one is right or wrong, but in their particular time, that was their chosen method with their chosen swords in their context. So with Roth, we make our cuts and we stay as much as is possible here with the, with the hand in front, rotate, 
So we're taking the shortest path possible to each cut. Six cuts. So you've got two from above, making a nice cross, two from below, making another cross, and then two horizontal cuts. So it's really nice and easy to remember. This exercise is excellent for conditioning. I actually used to use it as a beginner drill all the time in the AHF because I liked it and I think it does teach some good things. It also does teach a few bad things. If you use it too much, it teaches people to flow through from one cut to the other rather than go into guards and parries. And that's why I don't use it as much as I used to. I now use the manual exercise and the separate ways of doing the cuts a little bit more because it teaches people to go to parries or their guard positions. So I, I still like the six cut exercise, but I don't like to use it too much because it just encourages people to flow through into cut, 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 which is absolutely not what this system is about. This is about you make your cuts and your thrusts when it's safe to do so, and then immediately get back to um, a safe position. Right. I'm gonna show it a couple more times. And an exercise, and also somebody recently asked me on the previous six cut video, could they see it from behind so they could basically match it? And that makes some sense. I will do that and hopefully that will help you. I'll exaggerate the moves a little bit so that you can hopefully see it a little bit better. So from here, in your outside guard, deliver cut one from right to left diagonally. Rotate up, deliver cut two diagonally from left to right. Rotate the blade, diagonal cut, ascending from right to left. Bring the blade around to our left side and deliver cut four ascending from left to right. Then rotate and deliver cut five, twist the blade around, deliver cut six. So we started in outside guard and cut six ends basically in an extended outside guard. So you can just bring it back up, and you're back in position. So yeah, remember this, two high cuts, okay? I should exaggerate now, two low cuts, two horizontals. Experiment with your grip. I talked about this a lot in the uh, grip video I did recently about going from hammer to handshake to thumbs up. I've also been doing a bit more research and reading on using a grip right into the pommel like this, which there's some evidence for in the period and, and afterwards. Uh, and I found some people in the AHF have actually instinctively done, which is kind of interesting. It gains a bit of reach, keeps your hand away from the guard for protection and uses this basically pistol grip area section for leverage, and some people find this good. Um, it is a little less stable on recoveries, I find, but it's an interesting position. So experiment with your grips, have a go with the six cut diagram. It is good for conditioning, and once you're comfortable with it, do the lunge and recover version, which is not in row, that's just my personal thing. I like to do it. So from here, uh, and simply because lunge, recover, and slip, and all that stuff is in row, as the kind of like bread and butter stuff, so I like to throw it into this exercise. So we throw cut one with a lunge. Then when we recover, we throw cut two. And when we lunge again, cut three, recover cut four, lunge cut five, recover cut six. And then you can reset to guard and do it again. There is your six cut exercise. By all means do it, do it often. Definitely practice it at home because it's a good conditioning exercise. Throw in the lunge and recover part and you've got some good drills. Do not forget your manual exercise and your separate ways of doing the cuts because they're so vital for teaching you to parry and go to guard. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will get on to the um, Taylor lessons very, very soon, which of course they partnered exercises, but they actually work as solo because in them, essentially one side is being told what to do and all the commands go to that one side. So I will get Esther out here. I've tried to avoid that at the moment simply because you're at home doing this solo and I wanted to do the same so you can see how it can be done solo. But I will get Esther out here for the Taylor lessons and show you it as a partnered exercise and how it can work solo. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already.